Hi there. I'm just sitting here on the dock of the bay, you know, uh, waiting to show you some videos and what happens behind the scenes. And um, we'll be talking to some of the guys in the band. And uh, let's see, finding out how the videos are made and, um, you know, whatever else you want to know. So here's a video that started it all. It's a song that I wrote when I was 13 years old, only in my dreams. that I heard only in my dreams on the radio. I was coming home from Manhattan with, I was in the car with my mom, my dad, and my sister, and all of a sudden we heard, doom, 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 doom. And we were listening, going, is this it, is this it, you know? And um, my dad started like driving to the beat and he almost drove off the road and uh, that was that, but it was a big thrill, I have to tell you. <laughs> I like to be involved in all the aspects of my career, you know, from writing to producing to, you know, um, checking up on promotion, everything, because, you know, it's my career, and, you know, this is long term for me. This is not like a thing that I said, okay, let's let's try to like make money or be famous or you know, it's it's nothing like that. I mean, it's definitely what I'll be doing for my whole life, and I want to make sure I do it right. <laughs> I write songs constantly. I mean, uh, before I go to sleep, you know, when I'm on a, when I'm on airplanes and whatever, and um, these are kind of 
some of my songs. <laughs> so I guess the most important tool you need when you're a songwriter is notebooks. And, um, you know, I guess my advice to people who write songs would be, first and foremost, try to be organized. See, I'm really disorganized, and I, I've lost songs. I mean, they're floating around this house somewhere. And, I mean, what would have happened if I would have lost only my dreams or out of the blue, you know? So, um... You know, once you do write songs, I would really recommend getting some kind of studio set up because, you know, I think you should learn how to, um, you know, produce on your own and stuff like that because no one knows a song better than the songwriter. And um, once you do that, you know, I, I would send demo tapes around to people, around to production companies and, um, and you know, record companies and because you never know. I think if you bang on enough doors, one's bound to open. My favorite artist has always been Billy Joel. You know, um, I started listening to him when I was about eight years old. And when I was nine, I saw his 52nd Street tour. I saw his concerts. I was sitting in the, uh, in the sky seats, you know. And, um, but I always remember it. And I, I always remember the feeling that, you know, he got from the lights and the blasting music. And, um, you know, so he's really been my, my favorite. And another one of my favorites is George Michael. Right? George Michael. <laughs> and, um, I mean, I think he's, um, you know, one of the most talented producers around today. I really like him as a producer. And, of course, as a vocalist and songwriter, you know, hold it. <laughs> the next video is Shake Your Love, and things were really shaken when we filmed this because it was a day after the big California earthquake. And this is a video that's directed by Jay Brown, and uh, it was choreographed by Paula Abdul, who's done a lot of work with Janet Jackson. And let's see, it's got a 50s theme, and I love everything about the 50s. When I learn how to drive, I'm going to get a 50s car. Got to learn that, you know? Anyway, here's Shake Your Love. Shake your love.
I think that making videos has become as, as common and as, as important as making records. You know, it's funny, I think that like rock and roll audiences have gotten younger because I have fans that are, let's say, four years old. And, you know, I mean, I didn't really know who artists were until I was, you know, eight or whatever. And, you know, I think that visually it just gets the message across even more, you know, the message of the music across even more. And um, I love making videos, you know, because I could like kind of ham it up in front of the camera, <laughs> you know, and show a side of me that you may not see in the music. Hi, can I do your autograph? Sure. What's your name? It's really important for me to take time out for fans to sign autographs or whatever. I feel very in touch with that because I'm such a big fan of so many artists myself. And, you know, I ask for autographs too from people. And, you know, sometimes I'll have, um, you know, whoever with me, like, you know, I'll be going to a radio station and then maybe kids waiting outside. And they'll say, come on, come on, we gotta go. And I say, no, 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 give me 10 minutes. You know, I wouldn't be doing this interview if it weren't for them. We put the band together about a year ago to go on the road. And these are all guys from Long Island and I've been working with them for a while and they're, they're all talented musicians. Well, you know, let me let them speak for themselves. Would you like to meet them? Thought you would. We have a nice mesh in the band because um, we're all friends, kind of. It's like a family thing, it's really nice. I met Debbie, God, for the first time last September. A friend of mine, Tommy, who also plays guitar in the band, he, we used to play together quite a while ago and that's how I got in with Debbie. Debbie hasn't had uh, a chance to get, you know, her life ruined by all the ravages of show business, so she's still pretty much the way she always was. Uh, it's a good time. There's uh, a lot of screaming fans and stuff. People uh, bring, like, all stuffed animals. It's funny because, like, I sit, like, all the way in the back of the band and I could really see everything that's going on. And you see, like, all little kids holding up all these little stuffed animals and stuff. So it's, like, it's really a trip. It's fun. It's a good time. When in high school, I went to a, an agency on a commercial call and saw Deborah's picture on the wall. And she started talking, you know, small talk because her song had first came out, Only My Dreams, and he told me to call her because she needed dancers. So I gave her a call and the rest was history. <laughs> <laughs> this next record you're gonna hear is a record that I produced with Fred Zarr, and it's the, um, the title track of the album. And let's see, you'll see two of my family members in there, my cousin Monica and my, my sister Denise, violently hit me with feather pillows. And you'll also see all the guys in the band there's Lou and Tommy and Greg and Adam and Kirk and everyone. So here is Out of the Blue.
after I finish a song, like in my studio or something, I'll always picture the video, like immediately in my head, because, you know, I mean, it's kind of natural. I mean, out of the blue, you knew it would be like a fun, kind of upbeat video, foolish beat, you know. I don't know, you could just picture like the pier, you know, and, and you know, so the, a song has a mood, and I, I always think, you know, of the visual things in my mind, too. Well, my family's played a big role in what I do, and, you know, my, my sister Karen used to do the sound engineering for me when I was, was on the road, and my sister Michelle makes a lot of the outfits that I perform in, and my younger sister is wardrobe on the, the, um, on the tour, and, um, of course, my parents, you know, they travel with me, and, and um, you know, they kind of uh, have been the biggest support for me. I think she was born dancing, born singing, I don't know. She was very little, she used to play the piano. Listen to the radio, run upstairs, pick out the tune, Billy Don't Be a Hero. That was the first tune that she hammered into all of our heads over and over and over again. And from there, we just took notice. You know, we noticed that she had a very keen sense. You know, she would hear something on the radio and she'd be able to duplicate it with very little effort. By the time she was five, we said, ah, what the heck, you know, we'll give her a piano lesson, see if, this, if she could really learn, you know, and she could. Although she had her piano teacher fooled, it took the piano teacher, I would say, a year and a half to figure out that she was not reading the music, but just playing by ear, you know. So once we got that squared away and she really was learning, she, she really uh, picked up. But she would rock up her classical pieces. She's basically classically trained. But she would turn them into rock and roll, she'd jazz them up, she drove her teachers wild. She was fun. She was a lot of fun. <laughs> Although I had been working at music for many years, a lot of people really didn't know about it, you know, even a lot of my friends and, um, you know, my, of course my close friends did. But once this all started happening, I mean, a lot of people really thought that it happened out of the blue and they, they didn't really realize that there was a lot of work involved a lot, and a lot of preparation. And, you know, I've really made it a point to maintain a normal teenage life, a normal social life, um, you know, get a good education because that's really important. And, you know, um, I think that if you do want to be in this business, you have to make it a point to stay kind of down to earth and, and in touch with reality, especially if you write songs, because that's what kind of gives you the ideas, you know, to write things that people can relate to and write about down to earth kind of subjects. The next video is for a song that um, was the, the first ballad I released and also the first record that I produced that you all heard. And um, it's Foolish Beat. And again, you're going to see family members. I know you're sick of seeing my family already, but that's okay. There's Grandpa in this one, and my little cousin Albert, and um, John Gallagher. He's not a family member. He's a model. He plays the lead male. And um, let's see, this concept was a concept that I, you know, discussed with Nick Willing. And, you know, I, I kind of wanted a, a sad storyline and everything. And I remember when we were filming it, there were a lot of fans watching, and it, was, it made it a lot of fun. So thanks, guys, for showing up there. Here's Foolish Beat.
Just, I'm still recovering from that video, you know, crying and all. Sad story. Just kidding. One thing I'd like to do in the future is I'd like to write songs for other artists, and I'd love to do a duet with Billy Joel someday. <laughs> and um, I'd like to get involved in films, you know, both in the, uh, actually in all ends. I'd like to take a, a course in film production. I'd, I'd like to kind of be behind the camera and in front of the camera. Not at the same time, of course. And um, let's see, I'd, I'd love to be involved in soundtrack work as well. And of course, I'd like to continue doing what I'm doing right now, which is, you know, writing, producing, and singing. Well, I hope that you enjoyed this as much as I did. And uh, this is only the beginning, all right? I hope we can hang out again sometime. So I'm just going to say goodbye for now. Goodbye! goodbye.